Hey there. Data storytelling is one of the best ways to hook your audience and get them to actually do something with your insights. But a lot of the advice out there is overwhelming. Too many frameworks, too many rules. But the truth is, you don't need 100 techniques. You just need five habits to make your insights impossible to ignore. And in this video, I'll show you those five habits with practical examples you can start using right away. But honestly, I didn't always get this right. It's 2015. I walk into the meeting room, laptop in my hand. I spent weeks on the analysis. I'm nervous, but I'm proud because I know these insights really matter. I present and people nod. One person even smiles. And at the end, people say, thanks. But then they leave. There are no questions. There's no action. There's nothing. And I remember sitting there alone in the room, wondering what the hell just happened. Also, when speaking with my manager, I realized that the problem wasn't the data. It was how I told the story. I focused on the details, the methods, the data, but I didn't make it about them. And that brings us to habit number one. Steve Jobs gave one of the best examples of this. When Apple launched the iPod, the official spec sheet said something like, five gigabytes of storage, these are the dimensions, this is the weight, all kinds of details. It's technically correct, but emotionally dead. Now, here's what Steve Jobs said on stage. Instead of five gigabytes of storage, he said, this amazing little device holds a thousand songs and it goes right in my pocket. Boom. You feel that, right? It's the same product, but it's a different story. Now, let's look at how we, as data professionals, often present. This model detects churn with 89% accuracy. Okay, cool, but nobody cares. They want to know what it does for them. So instead, we have to say, this helps you keep your best customers before they leave. Same model, but this one gets noticed. Because people don't want specs, they want songs in their pocket. So habit number one is, don't talk about features, the technical details. Talk about the benefits for your audience. Let's go to the next habit. Most data presentations are a visual attack. So much going on. It's hard to know where to look. And as a result, the insight gets lost. Let me show you what I mean. What do you see here? A few lines. Now watch what happens when we simplify. We remove grid lines, legends, and the y-axis clutter. We use one color to highlight. We add a clear, punchy title and directly label the key message. Now this is clear. And as a bonus tip, try the three second rule. Show your slide to someone for three seconds. Can they tell what really matters? What's the key insight? And if not, it's not good. So keep it clean and use color to guide, not to decorate. So habit number two is use color intentionally. Highlight what matters. Next one, habit three. Numbers don't speak for themselves. We have to speak for them. We have to be that translator. And actually, we may need to build something like this. Model accuracy improved by 0.07 blah 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 blah. Now run that through the data to human translator. We're better at reaching the right customers now. Guess which one makes more impact with stakeholders. Of course, you can always give them more details afterwards. But first, you need to make them care and make them curious about more. And this little book, Making Numbers Count, has a lot of fun examples like this. Here's one I really love. 28% of UK men don't always wash their hands after using the bathroom. All right, kind of gross. But now try this. More than one in four men you shake hands with at work may not have washed their hands. Now it sticks and it makes you wonder, like, do you still want to shake hands at the office? But here's the goal. Take a cold number and turn it into something people can picture. Here's a business example. Dashboard adoption is at 40%. Okay, but what does it mean? Six out of 10 people in your team are not using the dashboards you invested in. Same number, way more human. Okay, one more example. Conversion dropped by 0.5%. It sounds tiny, right? That 0.5% means 2,400 fewer signups and roughly 180,000 US dollars in lost revenue. That's not a drop, that's a leak. So habit number three is don't just present a number, 
translate it into something that people can picture. Let's go to habit number four. And this one has nothing to do with slides. We've talked about how to present your data, but here's what most people miss. Your story doesn't start when you start your presentation. It starts way earlier, before the meeting even begins. Because if you don't talk to people beforehand, if you don't know your audience, if you just show up and present, they won't trust your insights. So think of it like this. You're holding a bottle of water and every check-in before the meeting and every time you ask for input, share a draft and listen to the stakeholders' concerns that another little pour into their glass. And by the time you walk into that meeting, the glass is full. So now they're ready to drink. And if you want to build a lot of trust, okay, maybe not that kind of trust building, but you get the idea. By the time you walk into the meeting, your glass is full and now they're ready to drink. So habit number four is don't just show up and present, build trust before the meeting. One sip at a time. Final habit number five. Do you know why most people never improve their speaking? It's not because they don't know what sounds good. It's because they've never actually seen themselves speak. You've watched great speakers, you know what works, but when it's your turn, you freeze, you ramble. Why? You're missing one simple thing, a mirror. So try this. Step one, record a five minute video. Talk about something simple. Your last holiday, your favorite meal, or the city you live in. So no preparation, just go. And now we're gonna review in three rounds. Round number one is voice. Put your phone face down, just listen. Where are you unsure? Where do you sound calm? Confident, natural. Where are you rushing? Round two, body language. Now mute the audio, just watch yourself. What's your posture like? And are your gestures helping or are they distracting? Round number three, words. Now it gets fun. You transcribe the recording, throw it into Hemingway app. It's free, look it up. And check how complex your language really is. We want to aim for grade three or even lower because easy is understandable and understandable is the goal. So also spot the filler words, highlight what wasn't clear and try to tighten what wasn't. So habit number five is record and review. So you actually improve how you speak, step by step. Communication is key, but it's not just about presenting data clearly. If you want to get ahead of 99% of data professionals, watch this video next. I'll show you three practical skills that will help you and your work get the recognition it deserves. And no, it's not about learning Python. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.